We don't all have access to a full size studio and sometimes we got to make do with a smaller background, especially if you're shooting on location. But worry not because with the help of Photoshop, we can make this look like a full size studio in just a few steps. Now, I know some of you are probably thinking, well, why don't we just use generative fill for this? It's going to be easier for all of our adjustments. Well, I went ahead and did that just to prove the point that generative fill does not always work for these types of edits. We get some crazy legs, some crazy toes. I don't even know what's going on here. Some new backgrounds. All I want is a seamless backdrop that matches the color from the original photo. So generative fill is causing more problems than it fixes in this case. So in that case, we need to first select our subject and then create a new color fill layer and then finally add some shadows with some simple brush adjustments. So to begin, I'll access my quick selection tool by pressing W. And in the options bar, I'll choose the cloud setting for my select subject so we get a slightly better selection. And then I'll click on select subject while my image layer is selected in the layers panel. With that selection active, you could refine it as you would like, but for now, I'm just going to apply it onto a layer mask by making sure that layer is selected and applying a layer mask like so. Now we want to go and add a solid color that matches the original backdrop. So I'll go to the adjustments icon and go to solid color and then leave it set to any color for now and I'll click OK. I'll now move this layer underneath my image layer like so. Now I need to sample the original background color. So if I hold the shift key, I can temporarily disable the layer mask. So holding shift and clicking on the subject's layer mask, I can now go and sample one of the backdrop colors by activating the brush tool by pressing B, holding alt or option to activate the eyedropper tool and clicking in the background. Now holding the shift key and clicking on the layer mask once again to re-enable it, I'll double click on the color fill layer to access the color picker. And since my sampled color from the backdrop will be set to my foreground color, I'll just simply click on my foreground color swatch and it will be applied to the color picker window and therefore onto my color fill layer. I'll click OK. So now we have a matching backdrop color to our original photo with this color fill layer. But of course, our subject looks like they're floating in the middle of nothingness because we do not have a shadow. Since this is a studio photo and there's no harsh shadows, we just need a little bit of shadow adjustments underneath our subject's shoes, which we can use a brush adjustment to create. There are two different ways that we can do this. The first is with a brush adjustment and free transform. Creating a new layer above the color fill layer, I'll call this to right foot shadow. Activate my brush tool by pressing B and then set my foreground color to black. Up in the options bar, we want to make sure we have a 0% hardness for our brush. And then while that new transparent layer is selected, we can just scale up the brush a bit and click once inside of the photo. Now pressing command or control T to activate free transform. We can quickly distort and stretch this by holding the shift key and clicking on this top anchor point dragging down to squish this brush adjustment. So it looks like it's sitting on a surface inside of the studio here. And from there, we can go and position this as we would like underneath our subject. We can hold command or control and click on the corner anchor points to distort the shadow. Again, holding command or control to do this. You might notice that some of the edges of our subject don't look very nice, and that is because we have not used select and mask. That is outside of the scope of this tutorial. But if you want to see a video about select and mask, you can learn more about it in this video here. But anyways, distorting that shadow until we're happy with how it is looking again, holding the shift key and dragging inwards to squish your shadow and then command or control and clicking on your anchor points to distort it and skew it in different areas. So this is our first shadow and we now need to add some extra shadows to her heel and the other shoe. I'll press the check mark to confirm those changes, create a new layer, grab the brush tool and then repeat this process once again. So I'll click once, press command or control T, hold the shift key, squish that in like so, and then go and position this as we would like underneath her heel in this case. If the adjustment is too intense, we can of course click on that layer and then reduce the layer opacity to bring down the intensity of that shadow like so. Now you likely get the idea here, but there is an additional setting that we can use inside of the brush preset panel. If we right click while our brush tool is active, 
we can click on the circles of our brush preview and just go and drag this inwards to create a brush that already looks like it sits along a surface. With that brush selected, we'll create another new layer so we can edit this brush adjustment separate from all of the other ones. And I can just go and click once like so, press Command or Control T, and we can do a little bit of refinements as needed. But because of that brush adjustment, it gets us to a closer result a little bit faster. When you're placing these shadows, just make sure that they're all following the same direction. Assuming that the light source was coming from the right side, we want our shadows to stretch out to the left so that everything makes sense. So I'm just going to speed up this process until all of these shadows are added and refined with the layer opacity adjustment. Now to finalize the effect, if there are any areas that you do not want to see anymore, we can just hold the shift key, click on our top most shadow layer, click on our bottom most shadow layer to select all of those while holding shift, then press command or control E to merge them onto one layer. And I'll call this two shadows. Now adding a layer mask, we can activate our brush tool by pressing B. I'll right click and change the brush back to a full circular shape and still with a 0% hardness and my foreground color is set to black. So I'm going to remove visibility from this mask. I can just go and remove the shadows in anywhere that I feel they do not make sense related to the light in our photo. So something like that looks pretty good to me. You could of course reduce the opacity as you would like of those shadows using the layer opacity. But now we have successfully added our subject into a seamless background. Here is our before and now our after. And it was all easily done with a color fill layer and a brush adjustment.